What's up guys, today I'm showing you how to create a part in Flux from absolute scratch. We're going to tackle everything from drawing the symbol to creating the 3D model. My name is Cornelius Robinson and this is Overshoot. Alright, this brushless DC motor driver is the part we're going to be creating. Let's jump right into creating a blank project. Let's start by naming this and adding a description from the product page. Next, I'll add a bunch of properties and fill in the details. Now I'm going to jump over to Adobe Illustrator to create the symbol. You don't have to use Adobe Illustrator, it's just what I'm comfortable with. You can use any vector drawing software to create the symbol. The actual symbol drawing is totally up to you, but there's a couple of ground rules you want to follow. The symbols need to be white, which is why I'm using a dark background. It's best to have only an outline or stroke of one pixel and no fill. Otherwise, Flux might not render it correctly. The rest is fairly subjective. I like to set the leads or pins to 18 pixels long with 20 pixels of space between them.
While not absolutely necessary, I like to add the pin names to the symbol as well. The font I'm using is a 9 point non serif typeface. I usually leave an 8 pixel gap between the edge of the border and the pin names. Once I'm happy with the symbol, I select it all and export it as an SVG file. Now we can go back to Flux and upload the symbol. On the right hand side, go to the Assets section and select Add. This is where we could also upload a footprint and 3D model. For now, let's just find our symbol. You'll notice it's automatically set to the default symbol. Now we can start adding terminals. The terminals represent each pin on the part. We'll use these to add the pin names and assign the pin numbers. Later on, this will be crucial in creating the footprint.
Now that we have all the pins added, let's bring in this part so we can see it. Right now, all of the points that we would use to create a schematic are currently centered in the part. So we need to add a position to each terminal. Now I figured out where these points need to be previously, but it's just a matter of playing with the coordinates. This is certainly one of the most tedious parts. But I've talked to Flux recently, and they're working on a better way to do this. Next, we'll move over to the PCB tab to create the footprint. Normally, I would upload a footprint to the Assets section, but for the sake of this video, we're going to create one from scratch. Just like the terminals, all the pads are currently in the center. I'm going to start by creating a global rule set and setting the selector to Pad. For the properties, I'm going to add a pad shape and size. The pad shape in this case is rectangular. You can find the pad size in the data sheet. If you want more information on rule sets, I've created another video talking about that specifically. Now I'm going to add an object specific rule to each pad to set their position. Again, you can find details like the pin pitch in the data sheet. For the pads that need to be rotated, I used the Z rotation property. For the center pad, we can add an object specific rule to change the size. This will override the global rule set that we created earlier. Now we can work on the silkscreen. We can add a line by right clicking on footprint and selecting silk line. This is a little different than positioning the pads. We need to add two object specific properties, namely a start position and an end position. Again, this requires some finessing of the coordinates to get it right. We can also add a silk circle and change the size for the pin 1 reference.
Lastly, I'll add text in the same way for the reference designator and set the position and text alignment. Now in order for this number to change when added to a schematic, we have to add a content property. Set this to this.element.designator. Instead of creating the 3D model from scratch, I'm going to use library.io, which is owned by Autodesk. You can create a free account, though, for this purpose. Uh, let's select the correct package type. I'm just using the data from the data sheet to verify the dimensions and tweak them slightly if I need to. Once we're done with that, just select Update Preview and we'll take a look at our awesome 3D model. Now we can download the step file and go back to Flux. Once again, we'll go to the Assets section and select Manage. Now let's find our 3D model and add it. Right click on the canvas or on root and select add model. Next we need to add the asset property and set it to the 3D model ID. Fantastic. Okay, this part is done. Make sure to publish the part though. All right, I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions on future videos, be sure to leave a comment. Also, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.